Boys and girls, we are uh, we're in a little bit of a predicament. You, as you know, we have been struggling with Leamington over the last few seasons because of these pesky old playoffs. And the board, in their infinite wisdom, have decided that this year we must go up as champions. The only problem is they decided that after we'd done a complete rebuild on the squad and we've not started as quickly as we maybe could have done. We're 12 games in. We're 10 points off the top of the league already. And the board are starting to get grumpy. This is the situation. Um, so, as mentioned, the board are looking for me to um, required win promotion by winning the league. They're disappointed that we're not currently doing that. And whilst also not currently doing that, they're also disappointed that we're struggling to keep within the wage budget and very disappointed that we're not scoring any set pieces so there's not i've not really got any redeeming qualities in the eyes of the board at the moment um thankfully i've got my past performance which is which is hopefully standing me in good stead and the fact we're playing high tempo football they quite like but aside from all of that there's not really much in the way of positives we started the season really poorly um, we've only one win from the first five games, a spell of three consecutive defeats in there. But then in the last stream last week, we started to turn the form around. Um, a couple of draws leading into a few wins, and now we've won four of our last five. And we are starting to move up the league. This is the shape of our season so far. Um, and we find ourselves just at the base of the playoffs. Um, seventh place 12 games played 19 points on the board but as seems to be the case every season chasing port vale the one positive is like i say we're chasing port vale every year which means port vale are due a big bottle job and a tumble down the league at some point ebbs fleet are my main worry because ebbs fleet finished second last year and were really really good ebbs fleet have been a problem and i think being eight points behind Ebb's fleet at this stage is not ideal at all. But all we can do is keep winning. So let's keep winning. We've got a bit of quite a look at all those games we've got to play in September. It's absolute madness. But we do start things off with a game against bottom of the table Dover and then 21st place Eastley. The game might punish me for not loading this save up for a week, but fingers crossed. With some easy games to ease us back into normal streaming again. Is that better? That feels like a better volume to me. Adwin eighty four gifted a tier one sub till dawn. That's better, isn't it? Is it too loud now? We've, we've got a penalty here. All this fiddling. I've not watched any of the games so far, but I look up and we've got a penalty, and we're one nil up. I've got a resist the urge to start whacking on that bell because Anna will kill me if I start ringing the bell every afternoon although I suspect if we find us if we end up finishing third I don't think I'm going to get sacked if we're scraping into the playoffs and then bottle it in the quarterfinal I think I probably get sacked I'm fair oh that's a lovely goal I'm fairly confident though that if we finish third and lose at Wembley again I don't think I'm getting fired for that I hope I'm not getting fired for that Oh, it'd be horrible to get sacked by Leamington. They're supposed to love me. Any posh transfers? As far as I'm aware, of, our business, certainly our incoming business, was pretty much complete when we signed Fuchs last week. Um, Smodix might be going to Oxford. Hopefully only on loan, because if we get relegated, we'll need him next year. FIFA Dembele. This is Sariki Dembele we're talking about, isn't it? At posh. FIFA Dembele is apparently 1 million rising to 1.5 million. I mean, it's a lot less than we would have hoped for a month ago. Unless we're looking to send a message to the rest of the squad. But yeah, if we get a million, one and a half million for him, it's it's a million more than we had previously. We're absolutely destroying Dover here. <laughs> Transfer market is at best a guess anyway. The values don't mean anything. Yeah, that value is nonsense. There's no way we'd be spending four million pounds on a 29-year-old. The most we've ever spent on a player is like one and a half. When I was at primary school, I had a flat top for a couple of years. That was a great haircut. My mum used to have to blow dry my hair every morning. These hair, they, the, the, me and my brother both had a flat top and they were my mum's idea. <laughs> I don't know what she was thinking. She'd just sit there blow drying our hairs and our hair and applying hairspray every morning before sending us off to primary school with a flat top. 
I don't think there are any pictures. What's been my favorite hairstyle? Well, this one, because this is the one I've had for... Once I settled on this, I've just never changed it. It varies slightly, like how short it's shaved changes. How long I leave it between cuts changes. So that varies how long it gets in between. When I did the um, Christmas video this year and looked back up through some of the other Christmas videos, there was one year where I had a lot of hair. It was like big and brushed back and... Well, not brushed back, so I don't brush it. Fingered. I fingered my hair back into a vampire hairstyle. But now I cut it myself. I don't have to leave it months between cuts. So it pretty much stays like this. I did the Freddie Lundberg with the red mohawk when I was 14. I'd love to... I would love to be brave enough to dye my hair. I've only done it once. When I was a teenager, I tried to bleach my hair. That is an important goal. Because Ebsfleet are one of the teams we're chasing. And now Chris has got to find a way to edit this without the talk about me bleaching my hair. Just to make it harder, I'm talking about bleaching my hair again now. Edit this, Chris. You think you're so smart? Make this look good for YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I bleached my hair and it went ginger. And because it was my girlfriend at the time who bleached it, it wasn't even bleached properly. So I had this little line, all the hairline all the way around was still brown. So I had this little line of brown all the way around. And then from like quarter of an inch out, it was ginger. Oh, we've scored again. I'm still talking about bleaching my hair, Chris. You, this video is a joke and it's on you. Make it look good. Oh, hold on. The replay, bleachy hair. Yeah. I dare you. Make it a good video. Oh, he's got to earn his money. I feel like this game won't be shown. He can't leave out such an important match. Right, we're back up to third place. Hopefully the board are happy again. How are they still disappointed? Seems good form should see them move at the table. Yeah, it should. I mean, we are 13 points off Port Vale now. We're catching up with Ebsley, but Port Vale are relentless. We need the Port Vale bottle job, the annual Port Vale bottle job. Because they've been doing... They're as bad as we are for the bottle jobs. They're, I mean, they've been, they've been banging on this door for five years. I think that's the same amount of time we have, to be fair. So this is their fifth year trying to get promoted out of this league. Oh, God. We've been... They've been our... They're probably our biggest rivals at this point. How far is... Port Vale are in Stoke, aren't they? How far is Stoke from Leamington? I feel like they're vaguely in the same sort of place they're over that side of the country i've had wrexham in the premier league develop a rivalry with chelsea nice how long did it take oh that's a pass what a goal what a goal that was such a good goal i'm not even going to talk about bleaching my hair so chris can leave it in that's a beauty an absolute beauty and this is our local rivalry i think is kidderminster local to us they're certainly on our rivals list. I think. Right, let's keep this keep this going. I didn't bleach anything else. No, I didn't, I'm afraid. Oh look, we're playing football again. Oh, 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 oh. We're starting to get this diamond rolling. What a difference playing the playmaker a little bit further forward makes. Make note of this, future Kev. You need to be doing this with Norwich. We need the playmaker in behind the strikers. It just makes it so delicious. Oh. That's not ideal. Oh, that is blatant. Send him off, referee. That is the most blatant professional foul I've ever seen in Football Manager. <laughs> and now to add a third. Oh, it's a lovely pass again. Conte, I think he's on a hat trick. Can't apply the finish though. Conte's really developing as a striker this season. He was like a backup central midfielder for us last year. And this year... We're playing him up front and he's becoming the player we hoped Theodros would be. That's a nice finish as well. Oh, it's terribly sad. So I make the move now. Simon Davies is in temporary charge. Normally Matthew Everington gets that job. He walked out as well. 
Matthew Everington's normally your standard caretaker manager at Peter. Where does staff live on here? No, Everington's still there. So you've got Davies as manager. See, in real life, Everington's now assistant manager. So that would have been perfect, having Davies and Everington as manager and assistant manager. The boys who came through the youth team together, went to Spurs together all those years ago. I mean, that shows how old I am. I'd barely started having my hair cut like this. That was around when I was bleaching my hair. When these two came through at Posh. How are we doing? We are still 13 points behind Port Vale. When do we play them? Have we already played them? We've already lost to them. That's a problem. We do play them again there, but away from home. Port Vale need to get Botley. Because the board are still disappointed. Anna, why are you phoning me? Anna, I'm streaming! So what's the problem? I just went to the bedroom and you are a pain because you, I don't know what you've done, but you've knocked my washing all over the floor and that, knocked it up. That doesn't sound like explain something yourself. I'd do. You sure there's not got, not been a cat getting there or something? No, explain yourself, Kevin. I don't remember it happening. There might have been an earthquake or something. Where was your washing? On the chair. What chair? On the chair that's in my bedroom. Oh, your chair. No, I've not been near the chair. You're a liar. I don't think it was me. Anyone could have done that. Well, the only one that comes in here except me. Mm. No, I didn't do it. The I'm chat have made a very good point. What about Dave? Dave could have done it. He's not in here. Dave doesn't, Dave doesn't come in this room. You made sure of that. Yeah, but I've been in my office all morning and you have you, already you've revealed been you've been long. snoozing in the living room. So you've Dave has had free range of the house. Multiple times today. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else just said it was one of the lions. Yeah, uh, one of the lions has got in there. He had, he had nine lions. Nine lions? Yeah, in my mum's old house in her bedroom. How do you fit nine lions in one bedroom? I had nine of them, and I was feeding them. What were with... you feeding the lions? So I had, there was this, you know, like a two-litre bottle? Of what? We had made, yeah. We had made that into a, a scoop, and we would fill that half up, fill it with water, and then just hold it so the lions could eat out of it. Just realised all this time I've been holding the bit I talk into to the microphone rather than the bit you come out of. I don't know how phones work. Anna, you'll be devastated to know Samuel Muller's broken his arm. Oh. That means three months without a Muller corner. Well, you play football. How do you break your arm? Um, he was injured in an accidental collision in training. Who breaks? Samuel Muller. What should we do? Should we sign a replacement? Give him a paycheck. Hold on. He's earning £375 a week. He's got three months of doing nothing now. No, because he doesn't use his arms for football. What, so he, he needs to play with a broken arm? Yeah. I mean, that was an option, but I've clicked to send him to a specialist instead. I think he's going for surgery. I should have, I should have asked you before I started pressing the buttons, because I bet that's cost me more as well. Although it does say letting him see the specialist is best for his long-term health. Did you all hear that? That's confirmation of my management philosophy. You're only playing until you're about 29. This is where I get it from. As soon as you're over 29, you're done. This lot are forever telling me I should be playing 30-year-olds. Why are you old? Exactly, they're old. <laughs> Older than me, that's for sure. I couldn't run around for 90 minutes. Jeez. You couldn't run around for 90 minutes when you were 29, though. <laughs> That's no comparison. Uh, right, I'm going to get on with my stream now. You do that then. Have fun with your lions. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye. Game thing that we did at Leamington that Foxy arranged. We're going to give up a late goal again here, aren't we? Yeah, Dobo was the shop that I'm talking about. They don't go above a 50-inch chest on velvet tuxedos. Inconsiderate swines. And I have a lot of chest. I am chesty, as you might say. But yeah, I got all this stuff. It's all to do with it. It's mad. Can you believe it? You just used to watch me play in the game. I was just pretending to be a football manager and talking about weird stuff. And then just watch me do it. And that, that was my job. I know it doesn't sound like a real job, does it? But it was for a little while. 
That could be a very important goal we've just scored there. Right, boys and girls. That win was important. We're 18 points behind Port Vale now. Oh, my word. 